Uh, okay guys, so, sorry I was about to press pause. Ang napindot ko is stop. So let us resume. Uh, while back we were talking about natural law. Natural law is different from human made laws. So what do we have now? What we have now are human made laws. So wala na ang natural law. Ano ba yung mga natural law? One example of our natural law is the law of Kalanchao. Meron din tayo yung mga earlier form of law. Those are, I believe, unwritten. These are the law on, uh, which states that an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. So, kung mata ang sinira mo sa isang tao, mata rin ang kabayaran. So, yan. Yung mga batas ni Nalapu-Lapu noon, uh, bago pa sakupin ng Spaniards, di ba? So, those are natural law. Kumbaga, unwritten. But is in nature that uh, guides group of persons. But nowadays, we have the human-made laws in effect. Next is the natural rights. The rights that according to natural law theories, individuals retain in the face of government action and interest. So, we have lots of natural rights. What is hedonistic calculus? It talks about the belief that behavior holds value to any individual undertaking it according to the amount of pleasure or pain that it can be expected to produce for that person. So, it is also known as utilitarianism. So, hedonistic calculus, when we say hedonistic calculus, from the word calculus, you compute. Di ba? Parang magkocompute ka dyan. Parang calculator. So, hedonistic calculus. So, what is the principle behind hedonistic calculus? Wherein, people avoids pain, but they seek pleasure. So, yan yung formula. The formula, uh, the formula under hedonistic calculus is that lahat ng tao, we seek pleasure. Gusto natin magandang buhay, masayang buhay. Pero ayaw natin ng pain. Ayaw natin ng suffering. Now, now in relation to crime, criminals calculate so, yan na yung calculus. Criminals calculate whether or not the fruit of the crime is of greater pleasure than the punishment. So, kung napakalaki ng fruits ng crime, tapos napakalit ng punishment, then ang ginagawa nila is, ginagawa nila yung crime. Si, gawin ko na yung crime, okay lang naman na mahuli ako. Hindi naman ako, mag, hindi naman ako magigilty makakalusot naman ako eh. So, parang ganyan. Pero, as a result of their cal uh, calculus, pagka nakita nila na, uy, napakalaki masyado ng penalty ng crime pag nahuli ako. Pero, ang lit-lit naman ng game. Huwag ko nalang gawin yung crime. So, yan. Yan ang ibig sabihin ng hedonistic calculus or utilitarianism. They have uh, rational, they, people are rational, so they know whether or not to commit a crime or to deter himself from committing crime. Next is the panopticon, a prison design which is circular building, uh, which a circular building, with cells along the circumference, each clearly visible from central location staffed by guards. So that is a panopticon. It is a prison designed which is a circular building. So, panopticon, circular na building, prison siya, with cells along the circumference. When we say circumference, uh, ano siya? Parang may sa gilid ng circle, yan ang circumference. Yung perimeter, kumbaga, perimeter, we call it perimeter pagka 
square rectangle, yun ang perimeter, di ba? Within the perimeter of the lot. So, yung gilid ng, ng square or rectangle. When we say circumference naman, it is the outside of the circle. So, meron siyang cell <coughs> along the circumference, each clearly visible from the central location staffed by guards. So, means to say, uh, it is a prison that is circular in shape and the cell is visible from the staff, from center. Ayun, so, nakikita ng, ng mga tao sa center yung mga nangyayari sa sa loob ng panoptikon. We have the neoclassical criminology. A contemporary version of classical criminology that emphasizes deterrence and retribution with reduced emphasis on rehabilitation. So that is our neoclassical criminology. A, somewhat, a, develop, a development of the classical criminology with emphasis on deterrence and retribution and with reduced emphasis on rehabilitation. So when we speak of deterrence, we have here two types. General deterrence, it refers to a goal of criminal sentencing that seek to prevent others from committing crime similar to one of uh, one for which a particular offender is being sentenced so yan ang general deterrence pag isang tao gumawa ng krimen tapos ang punishment pa noong araw is public di ba pag grave yung offense public hanging so, hinahang nila hanggang mamatay yung offender in public. Ngayon, if the effect of that punishment deters all the people surrounding uh, the punishment, then that is general deterrence. Kung baga lahat na ng tao ay nadeter sa pag-commit ng crime kasi ay ayokong magaya dyan, ayokong mahangin in public. So, kung ganun ang effect niya, general deterrence naman. Uh, general deterrence siya. A specific deterrence is a goal of criminal sentencing that seek to prevent a particular offender from engaging repeat criminality. So, when we say specific deterrence naman siya, nakatotok siya sa perpetrator lang. So, specific deterrence. Siya lang ang uh, pinagbabawalang umulit. So, if the person stole a property, tapos ngayon, pinanis siya, specifically in private, ano, ulitin mo pa ba o hindi? Kung ayaw mo maulit to sa'yo, wag mo nang ulitin. So, pagka hindi niya inulit, then that is effective, is specific deterrence. So, specific deterrence, naka-address lang siya sa perpetrator itself. Pero sa general deterrence, naka-address yung punishment to all person including the perpetrator para wag na nilang ulitin at wag din nilang gayahin. We have here crimes mala inse and crimes mala prohibita. Mala inse are acts that are thought to be wrong in uh, to be What's that? Acts that are thought to be wrong in and of themselves. So, these are crimes that are wrong, evil in itself. So, talagang baling mali na talaga siya. What is malaprohibita? These are acts that are wrong only because they are prohibited. So, kumbaga, ma crimes malaprohibita, these are acceptable, supposedly, noong araw, okay pa, medyo accept, acceptable ba. Pero, 
dahil because of human experience, nagkakaroon siya ng maraming ill result, ill effects, pinagbawal. So, pinagbawal siya ngayon, violation of that is still a crime. One example of a crime mala in se is our violation of any under the revised penal code, di ba? Lahat ng article sa revised penal code are considered mala in se. Kung ka nag-violate ka dyan ng isa, you have committed a crime mala in se. Yung theft. By its nature, maling-mali talaga. So, bawal magnakaw, di ba? Ever since the time of our Lord, thou shall not steal, di ba? So, maling-mali talaga siya. Bawal pumatay. Murder, di ba? In RPC. While crime prohibita, or mala prohibita, ang exam isang example dyan is our special laws. Violation of our special laws. One example is the Ano example dito? Jaywalking. Pwede yan, di ba? Okay lang na, noong araw, yung kukunti ang population, yung kukunti ang sasakyan, hindi nagkukos ng traffic, okay lang maski saan ka dumadaan. Pero ngayon, nagbago ang panahon, marami ng tao, marami ng sasakyan, na yung pagkukos mo sa kalsada is nagkukos na ng traffic, ang laki na ng effects sa traffic, then pinagbawal na ang jaywalking. So, you are prohibited from doing so. Kaya, crime, mala prohibita. Kaya siya, mala prohibita. So, you are not doing an evil thing, pero, crime pa rin yun kasi pinagbawal ng batas. Next is the free will. The ability of human beings to purposely and deliberately choose to follow a calculated course of action. So, yan naman yung free will natin. After applying the utilitarianism or the hedonism calculus, after nilang i-apply yun, then people have now free will whether or not to commit the crime or to what? Prevent themselves from committing the crime. So, we have here the classical theorist. Cesar Morkis of Beccaria. And Bonne Sana. So from March 15, 1738 to November 28, 1794 so ilang ilan ang taon niya 60 plus more than 60 was an Italian criminologist so he is an Italian criminologist and a jurist when we say jurist pinag-aralan din niya ang batas philosopher and politician Aba, so philosopher siya at the same time politician pa jurist and criminologist he was known for his essay entitled Crimes and Punishment. So, ano ang book niya? Crimes and Punishment. Which condemned torture and death penalty. And was founding work in the field of criminology. So, in his book, Crimes and Punishment, he condemned torture. So, bawal ang torture, bawal ang death penalty. Yan ang content ng kanyang book. So, we have three types of crime according to Cesar Vicaria. Those that threaten the security of the state. So, uh, internal crimes against internal security sa ating revised penal code. So, those threaten the security of the state. So, anong example niyan? Yung kodita, rebellion. Insurgency, di ba? In the Philippines, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito is yung mga NPA, di ba? So, they threaten our security. Tapos, 
those that injure citizens of their property. So, crimes against property sa ating Revised Penal Code. So, what are the crimes against property? Malicious mischief, yung paninira ng property ng iba. Uh, robbery, theft, yung pagnanakaw ng property ng iba. Tapos, ito pala, those that injure citizen. Crimes against person din pala yan. So, ano yung mga crimes against person? Physical injury, pananakit ng ibang tao. Uh, homicide, murder, pamamatay ng kapwa. And we have the third category, those that run contrary to the social order. So, those that run contrary to the social order means to say, it is now either a special law, mala prohibita, it is either a special law or a violation of a city or municipal ordinance. Kasi it is contrary to the social order. So we have here two types of proofs by Vicaria. We have the perfect proof. It is a proof where there is no possibility of innocence. So perfect proof means a solid evidence beyond reasonable doubt that the accused is certainly the person who committed the crime. Parang ganyan, perfect proof. Walang kabutas-butas na proof. And we also have the imperfect proof. It is a proof where possibility of innocence remain. So, medyo nagkulang na prueba. Kaya, pwedeng makalusot, pwedeng hindi, hindi yung naakusan, hindi siya yung gumawa. Pwedeng ganyan. Perfect proof. Kulang. Inebidensya. And uh, under classical school, we also have Jeremy Bentham. From uh, February 26, 1748 to June 6, 1832. So, Cesar Vicarias is an Italian. Jeremy Bentham is an English jurist. So, uh, knowledgeable and on law din siya. Philosopher and legal and social. Reformer. He was a political, radical, and leading theorist in Anglo-American philosophy of law. He is best known as an early advocate of utilitarianism and fair treatment of animals that influenced the development of liberalism. So, Jeremy Bentham designed the Panopticon Prison. So, yan yung pinag-usapan natin yung Panopticon Prison kanina. Who designed it? It was Jeremy Bentham. And other classical school philosophers argued the following. People have free will to choose how to act. So, people have free will. Yan na naman, paulit-ulit yung free will. A deterrence is based upon the utilitarian ontological notion of human being, a hedonist, who seeks pleasure and avoids pain. So, yan ang hedonist. People avoids pain and seeks pleasure. And, rational calculator. They weigh the cost and benefits or consequences of each action. Thus, it ignores the possibility of irrationality and unconscious drives as motivational factors. So, people have free will and people are Hedonist. So, kung gumawa yan ng krimen, means to say, pinag-aralan niya yan. He has weighed the consequences of his acts. And he decided based on that calculus. So, means to say, hindi naman ako mahuhuli, kaya gagawin ko tong crime. Napakalaki, ng, napakalaki naman ng benefit ng crime na to. Pag ginawa ko, hindi ako nahuli. Ang laki-laki ng kita ko. One-time millionaire na ako. Pero pag nahuli ako, ano naman, makakapag-bail naman ako. Makakalaya din ako. So, wala pang bail, wala pang bail dito. Ah. Pero that's an example of people being rational. And 
punishment of sufficient severity can deter people from crime as the cost or penalties outweigh benefits and that severity punishment or severity of punishment should be proportionate to the crime. So, sabi nila dito, yung severity of the punishment would be the would be crimes. Kumbaga, would be the criminals. So, kung mas mabigat ang penalty, walang gagawa ng crime. And it follows that punishment should be proportionate to the crime. So, dapat may babagay daw yung punishment with a crime. The more swift and certain the punishment, the more effective it is in deterring criminal behavior. So, kung yung punishment ay swift and certain, when we say swift and certain, mabilis at saka specific, kung sino yung gumawa ng krimen, siya yung napapanish, yan, certain, then, the punishment is effective in deterring criminal behavior. Pero ang problema, what if the punishment is sweet? Ang bilis ng punishment. However, it is not certain. Iba yung, iba yung pinarusahan. Yung innocent. Diba? Then, it would now destroy the credibility of the criminal justice system. Ah, wala pala yung kwentang criminal justice system yan. Di, pwedeng, pwedeng, dadami yung criminal as a result of that. Pwede magkakanoy. Okay lang, hindi naman pa, marami naman palang nakakalusot na gumagawa ng krimen. So, gayahin ko na lang yun. Gagawa ko ng krimen, tapos, iba yung mapaparusahan. Diba? So, that's ano no. The more swift and certain the punishment, the more effective it is in littering criminal behavior. So, dapat swift and certain ang punishment. Mabilis at saka kung sino yung gumawa ng krimen, siya dapat ang napapanish. The classical school of thought came about at a time when major reform in penology occurred. With prison developed as form of punishment, also this period saw many legal reforms, the French Revolution, and the development of the legal system in the United States. So, from that on, marami nang, from the creation of uh, imprisonment as penalty, unti-unti nang nabuo yung batas. Kasi natural law pa lang ang guide natin noon ng, ng imprisonment. Wala pang human-made law. So from the creation of the imprisonment as punishment, it started now the creation of loss. So, we have the heritage left by the classical school. Yeah. The heritage left by the classical school is still operative today in the following five principles to it. Yeah. So, ang ibig niya sabihin, the principles presented by our classical school is observable up to present. Nakikita pa rin natin siya hanggang ngayon. So, yan ang ating classical school. First is rationality. Human beings have free will. And the actions human beings undertake are the result of choice. So, tama nga naman. Hanggang ngayon, tayo we have our own thinking. We are rational. We decide whether or not to do an act or not. Second is hedonism. Uh, pleasure and pain, reward and punishment, are the major determinants of choice. So, ganyan tayo. It is, a <laughs> it is but natural a thing with human beings that we seek pleasure, gusto natin maging hawang buhay, pero ayaw natin ng pain and sufferings. Gusto natin ng rewards, pero ayaw natin ng punishment. So, those are the major determinants of choice. Up to present, napapansin pa rin natin yan. Third is the punishment. 
criminal punishment is a deterrent to unlawful behavior and deterrence is the best justification for punishment. So, still, ang punishment natin dito sa Pilipinas is imprisonment. Wala ng uh, death penalty. Imprisonment. And it is effective in deterring would-be offenders. We have human rights. Society is made possible by individuals cooperating together. Hence, society owes to its citizen respect for their rights in the face of government action and for, and for their autonomy insofar as such autonomy can be secured without endangering others or menacing the greater good. So, up to present, we have human rights. We are observing this human rights. So, ano ba ang mostly na violation ng ng tao ngayon sa human rights? Diba? Torture. Yan. <laughs> human rights. So, law against torture. That is a clear violation of the human rights. Bawal na ang torture. Due process. So, when we say due process, it is the legal process of hearing, diba? trial, until a decision is made, convicting or either uh, acquitting the accused, due process, or legal procedure, due process. An accused should be presumed innocent until proved otherwise. And as an accused should not be subject to punishment, before guilt is lawfully established. So, dapat siyang magilti muna bago daw siya mapanish. And how do we do? How, we de how do we determine the guilt of the person? Through due process. So, there must be due process. So, at present, we have courts to determine the guilt or innocence of our accused. So, the positive school next to classical school, we have the positivist school. The positivist school presumes that criminal behavior is caused by internal or subjective or nature and external or objective or nurtured factors outside of the individual's control. So, meron daw factors affecting individual's behavior. Meron siyang internal at meron siyang external factors. Yan. The scientific method was introduced and applied to study applied to study human behavior. Positivism can be broken up into three segments which include biological psychological and social positivism. So, positivist theorists are Cesar Lombroso, Enrico Ferri, and Rafael Garofalo. So, who introduced positivist school? We have here three. Cesar Lombroso, Enrico Ferri, and Rafael Garofalo. How about the classical school? It is Cesar Vicaria and Jeremy Bentham. So, uh, we have here definition of terms. Positivism is the application of scientific technique to study crime and criminals. So, we have scientific techniques to study crimes and criminals. What is hard determinism? It pertains to the belief that crime results from forces that are beyond the control of the individual. So, yun naman ang sinasabi ni positivist school. So, parang ano, si classical school, meron siyang mga sinabing points. Tapos, itong si positivist school naman, ay may pagkukulang ka classical school. Meron din tayong mga incidents na hindi nasaklaw ng classical school. Kaya, ito naman ang 
i-open namin. Ito naman ang sasabihin namin. So, yan ang ibig sa, ah, yan naman ang positivist school. So, kung ano yung pinag, yung, yung kulang ni classical school, is yun naman yung sinasabi niya. So, hard determinism, the belief that crime results from forces that are beyond the control of individual. Means to say, kabaliktaran siya ng uh, human beings being rational. Diba si classical school, human beings are rational. They decide whether or not to commit crime. Dito naman sa positivist school, no. There are also factors or forces beyond the control of individual that cause them to commit crime. So parang ganyan, meron tayong hard determinism. Some people, some criminals are forced to do so, but they uh, uh, but it was not a result of their free will and their being rational, parang ganyan. Third is the nothing works doctrine. The belief popularized by Robert Martinson in the 1970s that correctional treatment programs have little success in rehabilitating offenders. So, yun ang nothing works doctrine. It simply means that the punishment, imprisonment, does not treat, di ba? Does not treat offenders. It does not rehabilitate offenders. Based on the study of Robert Martinson. We also have here the three strikes legislation. So, criminal statutes are mandate, uh, criminal statutes that mandate life imprisonment for criminals convicted of three violent felonies or serious drug offenses. So, three strikes legislation. This to say, this is a law, criminal law, that mandate the life imprisonment of criminals convicted of three violent felonies or serious drug offenses. So, kung si Pedro, kung si Pedro, mayroon siyang carnapping, aside from carnapping, mayroon pa siyang uh, drug offenses, tapos mayroon pa siyang uh, serious physical injury, violent felonies, ang penalty na niya ngayon is life imprisonment. So, that is our three strikes legislation. We also have soft determinism. So, the opposite of hard determinism. The soft determinism speaks of the belief that human behavior is the result of choices and decisions made within a context of situational constraints and opportunities. So, parang uh, people are or uh, people have no choice, but because of the situation, they did the crime. So, parang situational criminal, di ba? Yung, yung sabi natin, yung example ng situational criminal, they don't have, uh, they can, they don't have the rational thinking and free will to commit crime. Tapos, they fall not under hard determinism. Means to say, they are also not forced. They are also not forced to commit crime. However, the opportunity or the situation made them do the crime. So, that is the soft determinism. Uh, I'll just pause for a while. Hmm. Oops. Okay, so let's 
Resume, ladies and gentlemen. So, who again are the positivists? We have first Cesar Lombroso. He is born in Ezekiah. Uh, born, uh, no. He is known as Ezekiah Marco Lombroso, aka Cesar Lombroso, on November 6, 1836, up to October 19, 1909. So, ilang taon siya? Uh, nasa around 60 din. Was an Italian criminologist and founder of the Italian school of positivist criminology. So, Cesar Beccaria is also an Italian, di ba? Same is true with Cesar Lombroso. However, they differ in school. Cesar Vicaria is classical school. Cesar Lombroso is positivist school. An Italian criminologist and founder of the Italian school of positivist criminology, Lombroso rejected the established classical school. So, ni-reject na yung classical school, which held that crime was a characteristic trait of human nature. Instead, using concepts drawn from physiognomy, uh, early eugen, uh, eugenics, psychiatry, so study of uh, brain functioning, and social Darwinism, yung dwarfism, Lombroso's theory of anthropological criminology essentially stated that criminality was inherited. So, naman na daw ng tao ang pagiging criminal nila. That's according to him. And that someone born criminal could be identified by physical defects which confirmed a criminal as savage or atavistic. So, yan ang ibig sabihin ni Lombroso. He rejected classical school. So, no, people does not have free will. People does not. Uh, people are not rational thinkers. So therefore, criminals have no free will. Criminals did not weigh or think. Did not think either to commit the crime or not. Kumbaga, they are pwedeng inborn criminal. Born criminal na sila. Kasi namana na nila eh. Kung yung tatay daw nila is criminal, automatic na criminal din sila. And we also have here the word atavism, atavistic. Means to say that uh, criminals commit crime because of their physical defects. Kumbaga merong naiiba sa itsura ng tao na yan that would predetermine him to be a criminal. So, ano ba yung mga atawistic na itsura na, ng tao noon? Malapad ang noo, malalaki ang katawan, malaki ang muscles. Diba? Yung parang uh, ala Frankenstein. Ang itsura. Yung mga best friend ni Dracula. Frankenstein. So, pagka ganun ang itsura mo, most likely talaga magiging criminal ka. Yan ang sinasabi ni Lombroso. So, Cesar Lombroso, an Italian prison doctor working in the late 19th century and sometimes regarded as the father of criminology or father of modern criminology or father of scientific criminology was one of the largest contributors to biological positivism. Lombroso took a scientific approach insisting on empirical evidence for studying Crime. So also, so also, Lombroso was considered as the founder of criminal anthropology. He suggested that 
physiological traits such as measurements of one cheek, bones, or hairline, or a cleft palate considered to be throwbacks to Neanderthal man are indicative of atavistic criminal tendencies. So what is anthropology again? Anthropology again is the study of body measurement. So according to Lombroso, we have criminal anthropology. The measurement of one's cheek, bones, or hairline, or cliff palate, is a factor in predetermining whether a person is a criminal or not. So yan ang ibig niya sabihin. This approach influenced by the earlier theory of phrenology by Charles Darwin. So what is phrenology? It is the study of uh, the skull. Phrenology. Skull measurement din ang ina-apply niya dyan by Charles Darwin. And his theory of evolution has been superseded but more modern search examines genetic characteristics and the chemistry of nutrition to determine whether there is an effect on violent behavior. So those are the causes of crime according to the positivist. Merong naiiba sa body measurement, merong naiiba sa measurement ng skull, at saka sa mga uh, nutrients na kinakain. So we have here three types of criminal according to Lombroso. We have the atavistic. These criminals are those considered as born criminals. Kung bakit sila born criminals? Because it is shown in their physics. Observable sa kanilang itsura. May iba yung kanilang itsura. Kaya sila born criminal. Yung parang ala Frankenstein ng itsura. Research nyo sa YouTube. Sino ba si Frankenstein na friend, best friend ni Dracula? Yung malapad ang noo. May mga scar face. Nahati ang baba. Mga ganyan. Pwede. <laughs> Malalaki ang katawan. Malaki ang muscle. So that is the atavistic. Criminals are those considered as born criminals. So they are born criminals because they have body physics different with normal human beings. We also have insane criminal. This refer to people who became criminal due to alcoholism. Kleptomaniacs. Sakit sa pagnanakaw? Nymphomaniacs. Kumbaga, sakit talaga to. And child Moisters. Although insane criminals bore some stigmata, they were not born criminals. Rather, they became criminal as a result of an alteration of the brain, which completely upset their moral nature. So, kasama dito ang, yan nga, kleptomania, di ba? So, ang kleptomania, ang kaso dapat niya is theft, pero ang gusto nilang palabasin, dapat kaawaan daw tong taong to kasi ano yun sakit yun eh hindi niya mapigilan yung sarili niya sa pagnanakaw sakit daw yun so dapat dapat siyang kaawaan kasi hindi niya sinasadyang magnakaw sakit niya talaga yun yan ang ibig nilang sabihin sa positivist we also have the criminaloid these criminals refer to those categorized as habitual criminals so what do we refer as habitual criminals the criminaloids who become so by contrast with other criminals the abuse of alcohol or other distressing circumstances this category included juridical criminals who fall afoul of the law by accident and the criminal by passion hot-headed and impulsive persons who commit violent acts when Provoke. So those are criminaloids, categorized as habitual criminals. They also include juridical criminals and crime, a criminal by passion. 
ano ba yung isam- isang example ng criminal by passion? Kumbaga, tahimik siya, pero dahil dinusturbo nyo siya, o ginalit nyo, pinuvoke nyo, aba, nagalit. Na sobrang galit, di mapigilan, nakapatay. So, criminal by passion. Passion of obfuscation, yun ang nandilim ang kanyang paningin. So, Cesar Lombroso and the criminal man in 1876. Cesar Lombroso conducted an autopsy and identified various physical stigmata. Hence, Lombroso concluded that those identified numbers of physical stigmata were indicative of the born criminal or atavistic criminal. So, ito yung scientific study ni Cesar Lombroso stating that uh, we have a born criminal. He conducted autopsy on the cadaver of Giuseppe Villela and found out some physical stigmata. So, meron siyang physical characteristics na napansin. And this physical stigmata proves that we have born criminals or the at it proves the atavistic criminal. We have Enrico Enrico Ferri. He is a student of Lombroso and he believed that social as well as biological factors played a role and held the view that criminals should not be held responsible for the factors causing their criminality. Their criminality were beyond their control. Lombroso's biological theories have since been rejected by criminologists with control group not used in his studies. So, yan ang sinabi naman ni Enrico Ferry. So, criminals who were born criminals should not be held responsible. Kung baga dapat, hindi dapat sila mapanish. Yan ang sinasabi ng Enrico Ferry. Actually, this is a uh, present up to now. Kung napapansin nyo yung baliw, di ba? Yung mga baliw natin, yung mga mentally incapacitated person, hindi ka nakasalubong nyo, tapos nataong violente, pinagbubugbog o pinagbabato kayo. Pag hinuli, kahit nakasuhan nyo, madismiss yung kaso niya. Bakit? He has, uh, he does not have the intention to inflict harm. Underdevelop lang kasi yung brain niya. So, yun yung mentalidad under this positivist theory. So, meron tayong ngayon, meron tayong yung mga justifying, exempting, and mitigating circumstance for persons who does not have the intention to commit crime, but were either forced or uh, committed crime accidentally. So, may, kaya meron tayong justifying, exempting, and mitigating circumstances. Sa RPC, mapapag-aralan nyo yan. Yung justifying, exempting, and mitigating circumstances. These circumstances, uh, even if the person is guilty of doing the crime, ginawa niyo yung krimen, yan, hindi siya pwedeng uh, ma-penalize, ma-punish because he is exempted from the criminal liability. So, hindi siya pwedeng makulong. Parang ganyan. Yan ang sinasabi niya. Or, pwede man makulong, mitigating circumstance, pero, base, uh, base sa mitigating circumstance, mas lesser yung penalty niya. Pwedeng ganyan. Parang yung tao. 
di ba? Pagka yung tao na pwersa, patayin mo si Pedro. Kung hindi mo papatayin si Pedro, nasa amin yung pamilya mo, mamamatay yung buong pamilya mo. Di ba? Parang ganon. So, he was forced. He has no intention of committing crime, but he was he was forced. So, pagka ganun yung senaryo, pwede siyang mag-fall under exempting circumstances. Pwede siyang hindi uh, ma-penalize criminally, but he will be civilly liable. So, yung civil aspect of the case, pwedeng bayaran niya. Ganyan. So, Rafael Garofalo from 1851 to 1934 was an Italian jurist and a student of Again, Cesar Lombroso. So, these three persons are all Italian. Andrea Cupiri, Rafael Garofalo, Cesar Lombroso. He rejected the doctrine of free will. So, yan, kinuntar na naman nila yung free will. And supported the position that crime can be understood only if it is studied by scientific methods. He attempted to formulate a sociological definition of crime that would designate those acts which can be repressed by punishment. This constituted natural crime and were considered offense, uh, offenses violating the two basic altruistic sentiments common to all people, namely probity or the integrity and honesty and PT or the compassion or sympathy awa So that is Rafael Garo Palo So you have here activities Ah hindi past activities pala yan So with that ladies and gentlemen do you have questions uh, no. If in case you have questions, just send the questions to your class representative and the class representative will be the one to send it to me. Ladies and gentlemen, that ends our lecture for this day. Thank you very much. See you all next meeting.